It's time for the Daily Decrypt on currency competition you can rely. I am your host, Amanda B. Johnson, and today's episode is brought to you by All Things Bitcoin. When Bitcoin first became a thing, some people began calling it anonymous because funds live in alphanumeric addresses rather than accounts named like Amanda B. Johnson. But because every Bitcoin transfer is recorded on its perfectly public blockchain or ledger, it's only a matter of time, tools, and dedication to eventually de-anonymize all or most of Bitcoin's transactions. In fact, there are well-funded companies cropping up right now that intend to do this very thing. Now, some cryptocurrency users don't mind this. But others are utterly repulsed by the idea of the entire world being let in on their finances. For the latter group, there are currently three primary ways to restore the anonymous nature of cryptocurrency transactions, with varying degrees of effort involved. First, let's say you want to anonymize your bitcoins. There's currently no protocol level way to do this, so you'll need to choose a mixing service with a fine reputation. I've always had good success with, and seen good reports from others, using the service bitmixer.io. Let me show you how it works. First, you enter the address that you would like your freshly mixed bitcoins returned to. You then choose some sort of custom fee. Apparently this helps the anonymizing nature of the service. Then bitmixer asks you to download this letter of guarantee, which is basically signed by them cryptographically, saying which address you should send your funds to and which address they'll be returned to post-mixing. And then send your coins to the address you've been given. I'm sending about $5 worth. That was about 20 minutes ago that I did that, and I can see here that my $5 minus mixing fees has already been returned to me. Thanks, BitMixer. You can see it right here on top. Second, let's say you would rather mix your coins in a way that doesn't require you to trust website administrators, to be honest. Say you want to mix funds right from within your wallet, basically. In this case, you'd want to use a cryptocurrency like Dash. In Dash, I can pay a small fee to use a feature called Darksend. I start by telling my wallet that I'd like to Darksend mix my funds, and it will begin to break them up into denominations of 100 Dash, 10 Dash, 1 Dash, 0.1 Dash. Then, when I'd like to actually send a transaction, I tell my wallet to send it Darksend style, and before the funds reach their destination, they will be mixed at masternode hubs with the denominations of other Darksend users before landing in their final destination. And the third way, a way that doesn't require manual mixing of any kind. If we use a cryptocurrency like Monero, we'll see that block explorers don't allow us to see the transaction histories or balances of other Monero users. This is because by default, all payments have multiple possible senders and multiple possible recipients. Only the holder of a special private key called the view key of any Monero address can see that address's full history or grant permission to others to do so. So at this tender, young stage of cryptocurrency's infancy, the three options of using a centralized mixer for Bitcoin, using decentralized mixing within Dash, or just using Monero, period, are the main ways that you can re-achieve anonymity in your cryptocurrency transactions. So whether privacy is important to you or not, in cryptocurrency, consumers have a choice. Basically, you can have it like you like it, because this is currency competition, bitch. Today's episode is brought to you by All Things Bitcoin, a manufacturer of crypto apparel for men, women, and infants. In fact, I'm wearing one such piece of crypto swag myself, This is the Silk Road Fuchsia Tea, 10% of the profits of which are donated to the Ross Ulbricht Legal Defense Fund. You can see more teas, tanks, hoodies, and onesies for yourself at allthingsbtc.com. And my manservant Pete and I would just like to give a huge and hearty thanks to our viewers who continue to send us micro tips week after week. We really appreciate it and are both honored and happy to serve you, so... Peace out, brothers and sisters. Have a good day. Certainly, this level of payment obfuscation is sufficient for Fluffy Pony and his band of Knight Riders. Apparently not. And then the last thing we're doing 
is disconnecting the IP address um, that first broadcast a transaction from that actual transaction. Instead of going through normal um, TCP IP, normal internet traffic, we'll go over ITP instead. And then no one will tell which where the transaction came from.